guys and welcome back to more seduce me the ultimate giggity giggity we're back in action in this game because like i said so in the last episode i would be coming back to this game to actually do some romancing because the last episode we ended up getting taken by the gang of devils like malix and his girlfriend eris i believe her name was yeah her name was eris and we were taken to the hideout and we were like in a sticky situation we're like and then we had a choice where it's like we didn't know what to do but we couldn't just sit there just stand around do nothing and get our head blown off by the it's like psychopath okay so like what ended up happening was that i chose to i chose to wait first and then i chose to fight when the second pro when the second time it popped up so i chose to fight and then hannah was like trying to remember the spells that she already kind of looked through in her grandpa's uh book that she found in that secret desk that one time but we couldn't really kind of remember because like obviously we just only took a glance at it and then we kind of something made it made us put it back so afterwards we had this whole like the time time stopped and everything froze and then suddenly our grandpa's spirit appeared in front of us and we're like what the fuck how the hell did this happen and then we're talking to grandpa and grandpa is just revealing mostly everything like how like he was the one who brought the boys to the real to the human world and he was he sacrificed his life in doing so because i don't know the the contract i don't know probably that was like that was like the contract or some shit like that that's what he gets for tampering with the devil <laughs> demon magic anyways but uh he was the one who led them to the house and he was also the one that liked he was also in yeah he revealed that he was involved with doing a whole ton of like these magic stuff way beforehand like way before her hannah's dad married her mom and that's why her dad hates, hates grandpa so much and i kind of figured that's the reason why already and um uh what else and i don't know if it actually kind of runs in the bloodline of like the family but like her grand like hannah's grandpa was really glad that like she went to look at these and found these spell books because he had hoped that she had taken an interest in it and then afterwards like when um when all that's said and done, Grandpa was like, well, here you go. Uh, so uh, he kissed our forehead, and then suddenly we're a wizard, and we're blasting spells left and right. Like, time unfroze. And then we started to kick some devil ass because we were, yeah, we were casting. We were able to cast spells. We were able to, we were able to evade and defend ourselves for, like, a shorter period of time before, like, the guys showed up with, like, a megaphone police siren to pretend that they're the police and that made the uh the whole group retreat or that made eris retreat a lot and she forced malix to retreat with them and that was the end of that like apparently we didn't see them ever again they weren't gonna come back and then we we went home with the boys again and then we we're like oh shit that was that was the deal breaker where it's like you're you can you guys can only stay as long as those guys are around but since they're gone now i guess you gotta leave and so like they ended up i guess leaving or they they said they were gonna be gone by the morning so we went off to bed that night and in the middle of the fucking night we were interrupted by this rude ass bitch named diana who was like i gotta go take your memory now because rules and reasons and we were like what the fuck that's you're rude, you should get out of my house, and then she kind of held us at gunpoint, sort of, while she, like, left, like, she, like, made us float over, like, this demon mouth thing that was, that was, like, gonna eat us, and then she was like, it's either I take your memories, or, like, you, you get eaten by this gigantic ass mouth, and so we're like, wait, 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 we should, like, we should try to like talk this out like i want to let's make a deal kind of thing where it's like okay so she was like what do you want in exchange for like the memories or something like that and then the option was either it was her or power and i chose power <laughs> and then we ended up becoming a demon lord or some sort but we were reborn as like a demon lord and that was the end of that first ending and that was really funny because i was like well damn <laughs> this is like this entire journey was kind of like a personality quiz where it's like if you were dropped into this situation what would you do and this is how an, an ending would determine like who you are as a person. 
<laughs> I feel like that kind of sort of matched me well in a sense. But anyways, um, I think I missed the point of the game entirely. So here we are back here as far as I can like, I think I can get, which is like to the point where we pass out after the boys broke into our house and it's nighttime and we find Damien in our room. And, you know, I feel like I've gotten to know the guys a little bit now. Like, I think I can warm up to them now. You know, now that I've conquered a demon kingdom, you know? Like, I feel like I can do some romancing now. Like, I can, I, you know, you know, I can get to know them. I feel like I want to get to know them now. So, we will do that. I actually don't know if there's a certain order to do the guys in, you know, like usually ultimate games are like that where it's like to not spoil any major like plot points, you do certain guys first and stuff, but I don't I can't find anything on that sort. Either that or I'm not looking hard enough. But um I'm gonna do it in a way where I see uh where I kinda get from the first impression which guys I kinda take a liking for the most from least from most to least and that's the order I would do them so uh for this route I guess then I'm I'm gonna be doing it in a way where it's like Damien first because he don't talk that much and he's adorable that way <laughs> I don't know he seems like the on only normal person aside from James who I will do next but I like Damien more over James and then Matthew then Sam then Eric Oh, and then Andrew, right, because in the little description of the game in the Steam page, there's apparently six guys to romance, so I can only assume that it's the five Incubi guys and Andrew. <laughs> so I'm going to do it in that order, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I seriously don't want to spoil myself or anything like that, but hopefully that's not the case. So that's why we're here. So um, first choice first, we all know what... I already chose because I chose it last time is to be calm and protect yourself because um, I just noticed this when I was uh, doing edits for this video was that um, there's this little icon that appears very briefly in this corner and like it always ca always kind of catches me like off guard or like I don't notice it in time but I think it's an indication on which route you end up doing so like certain colors go for certain guys i think it was it's like a little heart icon with horns i think i th yeah i think so <laughs> hopefully i get that appearing more often on the screen and that way that'll show me that i'm making the right choices but here we're gonna skip ahead because we already i already went through all this dialogue so we're gonna skip ahead we have this choice here um where we have the the dinner we we're we we're in the dining area and the guys made us dinner as a form of an apology and this is the one of the choices that kind of popped up and I think I vaguely remember when I was editing that episode was that uh the choice so then actually goes towards Davian I think it was like I saw the icon pop up so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna see just I'm gonna click on it again hopefully I'm right okay so I'm pretty sure white is Damien I think if I got this shit figured out <laughs> if I don't then I'm like <laughs> screwing it out up but like I'm pretty sure the dialogue is all the same, so I'm just gonna skip ahead again. You guys can just go rewatch it because I did it the first time, the first my first run through. I actually don't know if this choice is actually matters or not because we're here where Suzu and Naomi made a surprise visit, and uh, we hadn't really explained why there are five guys living with us now. And the choice was they're in your head, they're visitors, or they're my brothers. And I last time I chose their visitors, so I guess for science we should go. For either one of the two here, they're in your head or they're my brothers. I don't know which one, cause they all seem like they're gonna lead nowhere. Unless for science, okay. Let's do eeny meeny miny mo. Okay, eeny meeny miny mo. Catch a tiger by the tail. If I let it go, eeny meeny miny mo. Catch you, and without you, must go. They're in your head. Susan reached out and poked Matthew on the forehead, making him stare cross-eyed at her finger. Uh, hello to you too? Well, that didn't work out. Seems real to me. Shit. They're not imaginary. They're, they're just really good and freaking hallucinations, you know? Um, it was no use. There was no time to lie to them. I felt helpless. Then I felt a hand on my shoulder. Okay, so we already kind of... That didn't work out. Okay, but just for science. Just for science. I did that, so there you go. Okay, so we are here to the point where the guys made a 
well, James made up the bullshit excuse that there are my servants who worked for my grandpa and now working for me, which is kind of true now that we know the truth. Now that we kind of know the truth, then like that's really funny because they did actually know our grandpa, but we don't know at this point. So we're over here and we're supposed to get ready. We're supposed to get the house ready for the housewarming party that was going on tonight. And the choice was that since Naomi and Susan were here, they were like, you know, it's okay, you don't, get, you don't have to hang out with us, even though we came here to hang out with you. Or we should stay around to help, we should stay, we should stay at the house and help the guys to like set up for the party. And last time I went out with Suzu and Naomi, so this time I think we're gonna stay and help around the house. And see where that leads us, hopefully. Are you sure? Yeah, hell yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure besides it is my housewarming party, I should help out too. Want us to help out as well? Sure. I think I, w I think we got it all taken care of. Thanks, though, girls. All right. We'll head on out then so we're not in the way. Okay. Bye. Sorry, guys. I'll hang out with you guys soon. It's all good, Anderson. We'll definitely come to the housewarming party tonight. Sure. I expect you to. If you're not, then you're not my friend. <laughs> Thank you. I led them back into the lobby and walked them to the doors, opening it for them with a thankful smile. They both gave me hugs before walking out to Naomi's car, which was parked in the driveway. And with that, they left. I was happy that they wanted to help, but I had to do this on my own. It was not their work, so I didn't want to force it on them just because they were my best friends. We had the entire day to work, the party was tonight, and we had to do all we could to make everything right. We sat down and talked about what needed to happen before the party started, the na started that night. Each guy had been assigned a different part of the party to do, and right after lunch, we began to work. I hope this involves alcohol. I mean, the first time we did it during the party, there, there seems to be a lack of champagne flutes being passed around, and that's concerning. <laughs> Since everything was taken care of by at least one incubus, James told me I could assist one of them. The question was who? Ah! Damien with the lobby, Matthew with cooking, James with the garden, Sam with the front yard, Eric with the dining room. Since I said we were going to go with Damien's route first, uh, this is the obvious choice. Damien with the lobby. I stayed in the lobby with Damien who nodded to me and passed me a dust cloth. We have to dust off the railings and other surfaces before we mop the floor. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. I, I don't know, it seems pretty clean. I nodded and rolled up my sleeves, climbing the steps of the staircase. Easy as cake. Just slide all the way down with like the, the dust cloth on your butt and just slide all the way down to the railing. I mean, I would try to do that just for funsies. Both Damien and I began to climb to the top of the stairs, wiping the dust off and railing as we went. However, a silly idea came into my mind. I looked over to Damien, wondering if he could read what I was thinking. Is it sliding down the railing? Is it? Because it would be hella funny if it was. Because then Hannah and I have that synergy going on. <laughs> as expected, as I expected, Damien looked over in slight surprise before giving me a slightly concerned look. What if you get hurt? Oh, is it? Is it? Is it? Oh, yo, 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 yo. Let's do it. Yo, 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 yo. It's gonna be so fun. Oh, come on. It'll be fun. I did it all the time as a kid. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Damien stared at the rail and thought. My mind began to wander at how one wonder at how much fun my idea was, hoping my thoughts would convince him. Damien sighed softly before smirking slightly and nodding. You just be there and catch me if I fall, okay? I'm putting my faith in you. Let's do this. Woo! I quickened my pace on the rail, dusting as quickly as I could as I got to the top. Damien followed quickly behind on the opposite side until we both were at the top of the stairs. We both then jumped up and sat on the top of the rail, sliding down each side like a roller coaster. Yeah! There was a lot of thought on the, ex there was a lot of thought on the execution, but not much to stopping. Oh, right. <laughs> I totally forgot about that part. Like, it looks like it can do some- that- that drop can do some damage. <laughs> Watch out! I'm cool. Oh, well! <laughs> oh, shit. Our brakes had become a slamming into each other and landing on the floor. Him on top of me. <laughs> nice. I stared up at him in surprise as he looked down at me in concern. Neither of us knew what to say. Yo, that's a pretty- Are you sure it's the same staircase that we're talking about? Because that's a huge gap. I don't know about you. Laugh, push him off gently. Just laugh. I think it's pretty funny. Just saying. 
Yay, I got the right choice! <laughs> I started to laugh. I didn't know why, but I couldn't control myself. I closed my eyes and laughed in pure enjoyment of what had just happened. Damien began to laugh as well, smiling widely. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty funny. You know, we didn't get hurt that badly. <laughs> Both of us ended up laughing on the floor. Damon rolled off of me and held his stomach as I held mine. We were both completely engulfed in joy. You were right. <laughs> that was fun. I know, right? Let's do it again. See, I told you. Ha ha ha. Both of us curled into ourselves facing each other in laughter before we looked at each other with smiles. Aww. However, Damien's face softened as his laughter slowly died. His smi he smiled with happiness in his eyes and a blush across his cheeks. I stared in surprise, my face turning red in return, but my mind going blank. Am I falling for him? That's a little too soon. <laughs> I couldn't stop staring at Damien's smile. Something about him was just completely charming. His eyes had a mixture of happiness and a small bit of yearning. Aww. Soon though, Damien stood up and reached a hand down to me, breaking my silent thoughts. <laughs> Come on, we need to keep cleaning. True. Where are we going to clean? Oh, mopping. Right. Duh, but that's not fun. I slowly nodded before standing and continuing to clean alongside him. The hour of the party, the hour of the house party had ar had arrived. In my mind, I kept uh, double and triple checking. Oh, is this the same thing? Can I skip? Yeah. Whoop. Okay, so we're here with the choice of either saying as ready as I'll ever be, yes, I'm ready, or to be honest, no. Last time I chose as ready as I'll ever be, which seems to be the neutral answer. Uh, mim, 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 mim. Let's say I'm ready. Let's have some confidence. I'm ready. I'm ready. I had to be confident in my skills. I had my dad expected a lot of out of me already if I faltered at this party who knows what he would think of me I had to assure myself in every word that came out of my mouth that I was ready the other boy smiled assuringly at me which made me feel a little better about everything I looked at my phone and marked the time almost right on cue the doorbell rang I gulped okay let's skip do I have to do interview questions oh shit do 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 Okay, so we are here again, and uh, the last time we said fuck off when Malix came because honestly, I would still do it again. But for science and for this route, like I want to see what other uh, possibilities or what other dialogue show up if I choose other answers. So let's leave them. Let's go with the second option. Just go down the list, I guess. Sort of like just leave them alone. Yeah, leave them alone. Malik stared wide-eyed at my words. I could feel the boys do the same from behind me. Malik then smirked and leaned in nose to nose with me. Yo. Just who the fuck are you? I'm the one person who's gonna kick your ass in the future. Just you watch. That's none of your concern. You got a big mouth, nameless bitch. Ah. You best be careful who you speak to. Yo, maybe I should have told him to fuck off. <laughs> Son of a bitch. This motherfucker's just pushing. Yo, I... I really want to beat him up like later. Can I beat him up later? I can't run. What? Where'd my mouse go? Yeah. Hey, let her go. Anyways, I my mouse kind of disappeared on that, so let's skip on ahead. Anyways, after that whole entire incident where Malik leaves because he couldn't do shit in my house anyways, we went to bed that day and woke up the next morning really early, and last time we went to explore the house. So hopefully, uh Maybe we should make some coffee, you know? Maybe we should wake up and make some coffee. Cause I don't- cause I would go explore the house to go find the- the book again. Because I really- I really wanna defend myself because I don't know if that's gonna affect- That's gonna affect like- <laughs> I don't know! I don't know if that's gonna affect the fact that like if I can fight against Malix when I get captured or not. And I hope I do. <sighs> um. Oh fuck, okay. You know what, let's just gamble here and make some coffee. I decided making coffee was my best bet in surviving the rest of the day. Why not? Haven't had coffee in forever. So I got out of bed and made my way to the kitchen unconcerned that I was in pajama pants and a tank top. I rummaged through the cabinets for a coffee machine and any makings for coffee. Surely my grandfather had some, unless he was a tea person. A French press? Well, it's better than nothing. As I began to make my coffee, I checked my email and text on my phone. No new important emails, no new texts. I sighed. I quickly made my coffee just how I liked it and sat on the counter. But then I began to wonder, would this happen every day? 
I let the question linger in my mind. For a whole morning, I did not think once about the boys or Malik's. Everything was peaceful, everything was average, nothing magical or dangerous or unusual. Ugh. I don't know about you, girl, but it's a whole lot of trouble. I simply drank my coffee as I let the thought marinate in the back of my mind. Okay, so that happened. Oh shit, maybe I should have chosen to explore the house. Then I could read the spells, and then I could have assurance that I could defend myself when I get captured. Shit, 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 I'm gonna fucking die, aren't I? Let's disturb them. <laughs> we came here over uh, after the whole, we went back to bed, and then we woke up again, and then we heard noises out in the backyard, and then last time I chose don't disturb them because I, you know, I didn't want to. And so now I think we're gonna, we're gonna disturb them. Let's do it. Hey! All at once, the boys looked at me, frozen in movement. I just stood at the doorway, staring at them after my outburst. James was the first to break away from the group, stepping towards me. Sorry. Good morning. We apologize if we woke you up. That's fine. No, no, it's fine. I've been awake for a while now. I'm sorry I interrupted. It's quite all right. We needed to stop anyway. We don't want to overwork Sam. <laughs> oh, come on. I can handle more than those pity punches. Your mind seems grateful that we've stopped. <laughs> Shut up, Damien. Oh crap, we should probably make some lunch. I'm sure you're starving. Well, I could have cooked by myself, I'm just saying. I'm not that helpless. I can handle lunch if you like. You all seem to be very busy training to beat Malik's. I'll take care of it today. Whoa, seriously? Yeah, seriously. Why do you sound so surprised, Sam? Yeah, why not? I'm not useless. I know how to cook and do other stuff, too. Well, no, I wasn't insinuating. Ugh, I get it. I'm just kidding. What he means to say is that we'd be really grateful if you could make lunch today. Yeah. Haha, <laughs> no problem. As I turned to the kitchen, the boys went back to training. They seemed very determined to get better and to become stronger. Might as well make lunch today. It's been a while since I cooked. Okay. So this is the part where we decide on what to make. We should make some simple chicken and rice again. I like- or cold cut sandwich. No. Chicken and rice. It seems more of skill- skillful than making fucking sandwiches, okay? So, we made chicken and rice again. Eh. Okay, so like... We made the lunch, we put it on the table, and then we either wanted to go find the one of the guys, or we go back to our room and eat. Uh, last time we went with going to find one of the guys where we didn't actually end up finding them But I'm just curious as to like since we've had more interactions with them. Do we do you get I, I don't know Hopefully I get to find one of them. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. I quickly rushed uh, back grabbed one of the play before heading one of the boys down I looked down each hall trying to find one of the Inkyvai wandering wandering so that I wouldn't have to go through each individual room finding them I Pursed my lips in irritation. This is new dialogue. Okay, so let's read that again because I was kind of just flying through it. Okay, so I looked down each hall trying to find one of the incubi wandering so that I wouldn't have to go through each individual room finding them. I pursed my lips in irritation. Where the heck are they? Where are they? I sighed knowing that I would have to search for them in each room. I quickly turned and headed up the stairs. I began to walk down a hall and opened a random door peeking inside. Girl, you should have knocked. You should have been like, hello, is anyone in there? Because that's just kind of rude. Luckily, lucky enough, I found Damien in the study. Yes, score! Yeah. Damien was in the study that I didn't recognize. Yo, this this is the place where we would have found the book. Are we gonna read it together? <laughs> there was a nice desk and a display case full of toys, books, and memorabilia. I had never entered this room before, but Damien looked like he knew this room like the back of his hand. That's suspicious. But we already know that he knows the Hannah's grandpa. But why are they not telling her that? I wonder why. I don't know. Damon was gazing at the pictures and books on the shelf, almost looking lost and dazed. It was almost adorable, but I could sense a small hint of sadness in his eyes. Are you yearning for a family? Is that it? Damien? Huh? Oh, hello. Yeah, hi. Damien turned to me and gave a gentle smile, as if he was doing nothing as I came in. I entered the room and closed the door behind me. I was just looking at the books. <laughs> They're very interesting topics. Yeah, demon magics, right? Very interesting. Huh? I looked over at the shelf and skimmed over the spines of each book. They were all a they were all books about business and psychology, all ranging in thickness. Some crossed over and brought two topics together, while others were strictly one or the other. Did grandfather read and study all of these? It seemed used, but they were all, but they were covered by a small layer of dust. 
Do humans really study this much? Yeah, you have no idea. Occasionally, it depends on why we're studying. What do you mean? Well... Well, if we are interested in a topic like business, we learn what we can because we want to know more. Are there things you can't study? Sort of, yeah. Nope, there are books and stuff about anything and everything. Even the demon world? Yeah, you wanna see? I know where it is. Maybe, but usually those books are considered fiction or religious theory. It was almost cute to talk about learning with Damien. I guess learning was different in the demon world, but telling him about learning was almost like telling a child the meaning of life. I felt myself become a little wiser as we continued talking. Humans can learn anything? At any time? Yeah. Crazy, huh? Uh-huh. We have libraries and bookstores full of books we can read. Humans have the freedom to learn anything. Yeah. I looked to Damien in confusion. He seemed to look jealous. What about demons? Can't they learn what they want? Damien shook his head before looking down at his feet. Why not? Demons don't have schools to learn from like humans do. <laughs> Everything we learn comes from experience or verbal mentoring. Books are only permitted to be read by higher nobles. Oh, well that sucks. I stared wide-eyed. There, no, there were no schools in the abyssal plains. That seemed so unreal, yet in a way I wasn't that surprised. The only ones who have ever touched a book are James and Eric, since they're the oldest. Sam and Matthew chose not to read. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> or, I can, yeah, I can see why those two would choose not to read. What about you? Damien stood silent for a bit before sitting on the ground, leaning against the largest desk in the room. I decided to follow along and sat beside him. You brought food? Yeah, I did. Chicken and rice. You want some? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. I bought food. Here. Thank you. Yeah. Damien took his dish of food and began to politely eat. I followed suit. It was painfully obvious that he was dodging my question. Did I want to know? I was very curious. Is, there, is that a, tr a prompt? Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to save this one. I didn't save the other ones because I knew it was pretty, uh, pretty obvious. I feel like I can overwrite these saves. Because they come up fairly quickly. Okay. Don't worry about it. Ask again. I don't want to be too nosy, but at the same time, I want to know. Like, you know? Oh my god. This is so vague. Like, it's so, like, it's so kind of like... You wouldn't think these any of it really matters, but, like, it really does. I'm pretty sure. So, um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Eh. Eh. Uh. Let's ask again. Oh shit! I was right! <laughs> Yo, my instincts be on point! Yeah! Go me! I was curious so I had to ask. However, Damon looked at me, stopping me from opening my mouth. Well... Because I'm technically not a noble at all. What? Oh, is it the whole stepmother thing? I'm pretty sure. Cause like, even though you guys say you're all the brothers, but you clearly all obviously don't look like each other. So there's gotta be, there's gotta be some Hoenn. <laughs> there's gotta be some Hoenn activity being present here. <laughs> I tilted my head and raised an eyebrow in confusion. Not a noble, but aren't you all, but aren't you all brothers? If the others are nobles, that would make you one. Damien looked to his dish with a sigh. I suddenly felt regret for asking and pushing the topic before I could apologize. Damien spoke. We are all half-brothers. We only share the same father. Our mothers are all different. James, Eric, Sam, and Matthew all had noble mothers who are now queens. My mother was not a noble and is not a queen. Ha ha, I was right. I hit the money right on the dot. There be Hoens. <laughs> kind of figured. But anyways, that sucked. Oh, poor Damien. I could see sadness in Damien's eyes. I bit my lip. I shouldn't have pushed the issue. I'm sorry. Damien shook his head, snapping out of his thoughts and smiled at me. For what? You didn't know and were curious. It was only appropriate to answer. Aww. Still, it was rude of me to pry like that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought it was like a little really, it was a pushy subject, but I, I went for it anyways because I was curious. 
I didn't know what to say. Damon only smiled lightly at me before continuing to eat. As he ate, my mind began to wander to the abyssal plains. What was it like? What did it look like? Was there a castle? Was there a castle big? How many servants did they have? Uh, my thoughts were halted by Damien chuckling, most likely at my thoughts. I turned red in embarrassment. Right. This is going to be a bit of an issue. <laughs> You're going to be reading my thoughts all the time. Sorry. You keep saying sorry when you don't need to. It's kind of cute. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Go. I pursed my lips, but couldn't stop a blush from running across my face. This was going nowhere. I went back to eating in futility, futile, futility, earning another chuckle from Damien. However, as I, however, as a groan of pain escaped Damien's lips, I stopped and looked at him in surprise. Damien, are you okay? Yeah. <clears throat> it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Is it indigestion? <laughs> are you okay? Is my food, like, not good? I heard him gulp down and hide another groan, making me even more concerned than before. Dude, what's wrong with you? Tell me, talk to me. Damien, Damien. <clears throat> it's it's just a headache. I get it when I run out of <clears throat> energy. I'll be fine. Do you want to hold my hand? <laughs> Would that help? <laughs> I mean, I thought they mentioned that before, where like they can still get energy by just doing simple things like holding hands. Like, you can, you can hold my hand. <laughs> He was out of energy. I guess he didn't take enough when we first met, so it was just enough to heal his wounds. None of us took <clears throat> more than we needed to heal. You can hold my hand. I'll give you one finger. <laughs> I'm so mean. I'm sorry. From the sound of his voice, he was fighting back major pain. I felt incredibly bad. Damien smiled very lightly at me. I'll be fine. Are you sure? You're not going to pass out. You're not going to eat me alive, are you? Because that'd be a problem. Give him your energy weight. Is that important? Yo, I feel like we should. I feel like we should because I'm a nice girl. And I feel very bad. And he's like this cute little pumpkin who's suffering needlessly. <laughs> so let's do it. Let's be ballsy. Oh shit, I was right. Yes, <laughs> let's be ballsy and I was right. If he needed energy, I was willing to give it. You can hold hands. We can hold hands. Damien. Damien instantly turned away from me before I could finish my sentence. What? Uh, no. No. I'll be fine. I'm used to this. What? That's... Dude. We can just hold hands. Hold my hand. Take my hand. <laughs> used to it. Used to the pa Used to pain? There was no way that was okay. Yeah. I glared at Damien's back before grabbing his shoulder and forcing him around. Damien stared at me wide-eyed in surprise. Are you just gonna, like, kiss his face? That'd be really ballsy if you did, Hannah. Damien, let me help you, please. I don't want to see you in pain like this. I care about you. Suddenly. <laughs> I continued to stare at him, wondering if he'd make the first move. I wanted to help him, truly. I knew that my energy would help him not feel pain. Damien must, had heard, must have heard my thoughts as his gaze changed from nervous to piercing. All of a sudden, I felt that familiar feeling of warmth run through my body once again. Damn, I felt my body s Damn, this music! <laughs> I was like, wait, what is this? Whoa! <laughs> it's getting hot in here. Put some all them inappropriate jokes in here. <laughs> oh, okay, let's do this in a mature fashion. Okay, guys? Okay, okay, guys. We all know what's gonna come. Um. <laughs> that was unintentional. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> all of a sudden, I felt that familiar feeling of warmth run through my body once again. I felt my body slightly heat up as Damien wrapped an arm around my body and pulled my body tightly to his. Damien grew a lustful gaze before speaking, bringing a hand up to cup the back of my neck. Just. Don't eat me alive. Thank you. Smooch! Kisses! Kisses! Yay, kisses! Before I knew it, before I knew it, Damien pulled me into a gentle but passionate kiss. 
Heat erupted through my body as his kiss slowly and almost timidly got deeper. Damon kept an arm around my waist while I rested my hands on his chest. Damn! How am I getting some? Game so strong. <laughs> The energy from my body was slowly draining in the kiss, making me feel light and warm. It was almost pitiful how comfortable and how willing I was in this situation. Still, I held no regrets. I, I was enjoying every bit of this kiss. And you, you bet your ass you will. Damon was a wild card. I didn't really know what to expect from him and his kiss was no exception. Damien wasn't forceful, but his kiss was deep and passionate, and it felt almost magical. It was how I imagined the first kiss to be like, except with energy drain. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good thing or not. But anyway, soon and soon though, the energy drain stopped, and Damien gently pulled his face away to end the kiss. I stared up at him as we both panted for air. I had never kissed like that before, and I was so lost in the moment that I had forgotten how to breathe. Damien moved a strand of my hair from my face to behind my ear, eyes still full of desire. I'm okay now, but I... We're not doing this in the office floor, okay? If that's what you're thinking. Cause... <laughs> Cause seriously, though. That's mahogany. I can finally say it. That's mahogany. I could feel the hold of his, I could feel the hold of his mind altering spell fade away, but I still felt hot and bothered. <laughs> Something told me that I wanted more, but at the same time, I wasn't sure if I truly did want to give any more. Keep going or stop, dude. Are we doing this on the office floor? <laughs> what? Are we? Away! Away! Damn, Damien, you're such a freak. <laughs> I knew it was always the quiet ones. <laughs> God damn. Damn, son. Are we gonna get it on on this office floor? Oh, what? Are we. Yo. <laughs> Yo. Yo. What do I do? And this music, though. <laughs> Sexy time. Should we. You know what? Let's, let's be ballsy. Let's do it. Come at me! Oh god. I opened the opportunity. Oh, should I put this as a warning? Just be like, Warning! Sexy time! About to start. <laughs> I opened the opportunity and I... And I was enjoying it as much as he was. I wanted more and I was going to let him keep going. I wanted to keep going. I leaned in... I leaned up and kissed him again. Damon gasped against my lips but continued to kiss back. Are we seriously doing this on the floor? I- What dude? <laughs> I could feel him pull on the tail of my bow, releasing it and following his hand- Oh. <laughs> and following his hand off from around my neck. Oh, the bow- Oh, the bow on like her- Oh, her shirt. Damn. He moved the ribbon on his pocket. He moved the ribbon to his pocket before gently unbut- <laughs> before, before gently unbuttoning the top two buttons of my blouse. Damn! <laughs> uh, um, I am not the person to be reading these sexy time, like, dialogues right now. I can't do this seriously with a straight face. I'm just gonna end up turning it into a very dramatic reading. The desire in my body drove me insane, forcing to- Forcing a moan to escape my lips as he ran kisses from my lips down to my exposed neck. <laughs> as he began to ravish my neck and shoulder in hot kisses, I leaned my head back and let a pleasurable sigh escape my lips. Damien was ruthless in his passionate kisses on my skin. Damn, the dude, but we're in the office though. <laughs> Still, I'm a little concerned. The window's open. It's fucking daylight outside. Someone's gonna walk by and gonna see all this. <laughs> um, Damien didn't stop touching and kissing me, making more moans and gas rush out of my mouth to the into the open air. He may have been full, but he was as hot as I was and bothered. I couldn't even comprehend how much time we spent making out. I was lost in the pleasure that I didn't care. Call it sinful, but I didn't care. Who the fuck cares? Take me! <laughs> I loved it. His touch, his kiss, his heat. I desired it beyond anything at that moment. Even as he lowered his kisses down my chest just above my bra. 
<laughs> my heart was beating wildly in my chest. Something about Damien intrigued me immensely. But something made my heart quicken for him. It couldn't have been love, but it was too passionate to be lust. Okay. What was it? It's probably your lady boner. I don't know. <laughs> However, I began to feel dizzy seeing the ceiling start to spin almost wildly. I gripped onto Damien's shoulder, trying to signal him to stop, but my mind faded to black before I could let out another sound. <laughs> Seduction came so strong, she passed the fuck out before it even got to the main course. <laughs> Damn. I felt good. <laughs> I didn't care that I was blacked out. I felt warm and fuzzy in the darkness. I never knew indulging in that kind of passion would be that good. I now just waited to awaken, hopefully in a good way. Unless she like blacked out mentally, where she didn't, she doesn't like, you know how like you get drunk, you get drunk so badly you don't remember the events that has transpired and you did some crazy ass shit, but you're the only one who doesn't remember, only the people around you does. Is that it? Is that it? Is that what's happening right now? Is it the fade, b fade to black sexy time scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My eyes eventually fluttered open, adjusting to the sight around me. I'm in my room. I felt familiar silks underneath me, letting me know that I was in my bed. I slowly sat up, stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain on my neck and shoulders, and I could feel my swollen lips pulse gently in healing. Damn. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back up and rebuttoned as if nothing happened between me and Damien. I was just missing my ribbon, which he kept and sort of stole, but it's okay. Before I turned to get out of bed though, I spotted my ribbon on the pillow beside the one I slept on. Never mind, thanks for giving it back. It was tied around a small pen in a nice bow with a small note attached to it. I gently slipped the note from the tie and opened it to read it. Thank you. I indulged myself, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I don't know, because I blacked the fuck out, so I don't know if I enjoyed myself. I stared at the note, letting a small sigh a small smile graced my lips. He indulged himself as much as I did. I enjoyed it. It was cute, though, to imagine him thanking me for something we both did and enjoyed. I brought the note to my chest, letting the memories of our meeting flood my mind. High five! <laughs> I indulged myself too, Damien. So much I passed the fuck out. I looked to the time out of curiosity. The large white numbers on my phone showed 5.31pm. Damn. Yikes, four hours of being blacked, uh, of being knocked out, and I still felt feel tired. It was Sunday, so I was allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. Really? It's still Sunday? What? The remainder of the night passed by unsurprisingly out of... What? The remainder of the night passed by surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Oh. Okay, so this is all the same dialogue. Yeah, can I skip? Yeah, let's skip. Ooh, we need a break from all that, uh, all the activity. <laughs> oh, that was a really quick skip. Okay, so anyways, I packed my bag. It's the next day and we have a school day. So I packed my bag and carried it downstairs towards the kitchen. As I entered the dining room, I saw a plate of I saw a plate with eggs, toast, and bacon sitting on the table. A fresh steaming cup of coffee sat next to the plate with the sugar and creamer on the side. Ah. Who made that for me? I walked to the table and couldn't believe what I was seeing. What? Who made this? I, as I spoke aloud, a small red note caught my attention. Have a good day, yours. Ah! <laughs> my heart skipped a beat as I finished. I could tell it was from one of the boys. Maybe it was from him? Hell yeah, it's from him! Jesus. I smiled before putting the note in my bag and eating up. The food was so delicious, I devoured every amazing bite. Damn, it's just eggs, bacon, and toast, girl. I looked to the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the door, checking myself. Okay, so let's skip on ahead. Since the skip button allows us to do so, I realized that if there's new shit, it stops. And it's like, bolted out. Oh, wait. I didn't mean to do that, but anyways, I was gonna skip with the because I thought the rest of the dialogue was the same. But before I could reach the handle of the door, however, someone took my hand. Oh, huh? 
Hi. I turned to see Damien, who was holding my hand back with a concerned frown on his face. My name. Uh-huh. What about it? Your name? My true name isn't Damien. I want you to know my real name if something were to happen. Oh, really? That's a thing? Damn, okay. Uh, yeah, sure, go ahead. His true name? What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? Damien gently pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name is Aesirol. Cool. As he said his name, I could feel it lock into my memory. Something in my head would make sure I would never forget it. Because, you know, that sounds like a nice name to moan to. <laughs> oh, shoot me. Damien pulled away and stared at me, despite still carrying, worrying... <laughs> I gotta recover, hold on. Uh, Damien pulled away and stared at me, despite still carrying worry in his eyes. If you are in any danger, call my name. I promise, I'll come and help you. You, sh you promise? Because that's gonna happen pretty soon, I'm pretty sure. I stared up at Damien, unable to say anything. I could only nod in response. Damien smiled before releasing my hand and heading into the dining room. Okay. Something told me that name would be used eventually. Very soon. And right on cue, Naomi drove to the, the gates with Suzu waving me down. I rushed to the door. I rushed out the door and headed to school, talking about the homework in the coming day. Can we still beat up Naomi though? Is that gonna affect him liking me or not? <laughs> Stand up and walk away, get her. You know, I say for science, again, I would- Seriously, I would love to beat her ass, again, but we already know what happened. Because I won in that fight. So, uh, let's just, for science, be the- The bigger woman between us two, and not childish little girls, and just stand up and walk away. Because I ain't got time for you. No. I wasn't going to bring myself to her level, she was a bully, and but I was not going to let her get to me. I had to be stronger than her, and only then would I have beaten her. I stood up and brushed myself off, pretending nothing happened. Anderson, you okay? I really wish I could have been beaten her ass again, but you know what? For science. That was a pretty bad fall. I'm okay. Yeah, I'm fine. I f a fall like that is nothing. I merely smiled at them, not wanting to let them know the pain rushing through my body from that fall. My arms were quaking, my shoulders were pulsing, but I remained content-faced. I quickly gathered up my belongings and nodded to my two friends. Come on, we'll be late for history. Suzu and Naomi looked at each other before frowning and nodding to me. Naomi and Suzu flanked me as we began to walk to class away from the gaggle of bullies. As we walked, I could barely see Suzu flipping... I could barely see Suzu flipping the middle finger to the group behind us from the corner of my eye. Yeah, Suzu, you get them. Friggin' bunch of set feet lickers. Yeah. That's gross, Suzu. But that's true. It's true. Yeah. It's all OMG! Lisette is the best! Let's follow her around because we obviously don't have lives. Yeah, right on point. Naomi and I could not help but laugh. The group behind us, however, did not like Suzu's words. At least my dad doesn't screw around in the black market to keep a stupid casino running. Aw, oh, hell no! You want- Okay, instead of Lizette, I'ma beat your ass instead. Susan stopped, Naomi and I stepped as- Susan stopped, Naomi and I stopped as well to look back at Suzu, who was completely red and angry. Suzu slowly turned ahead to the group, glaring daggers at them. The fuck did you just say? Oh, hell! Yes! Go, you go, get him! Get him! Get him! I had to act fast. I placed my hand on Suzu's shoulder and gripped tightly, knowing she could try to push my hand away. Suzu, they're not worth it. Let's just go. Aw, come on. No, I think it's about time we taught them some manners. Yeah! Let's go, Suzu, you and me. Suzu? No, Naomi. I looked at Lizette and her group. Lizette had a widely amused smile on her face, which irked me to no end. Nevertheless, I knew that fighting wasn't going to get us anywhere. But come on. Let's go. I grabbed Suzu by the shoulder roughly, pulling her back to Naomi and me. Suzu tried to step forward. Oh, Suzu tried to step towards the group, but Naomi held onto her other shoulder. We held onto Suzu, who fought against our hands as we marched to class. Surprisingly, the rest of the school day went off without another incident. I went to my classes, had lunch, and was anxious to get home. And as the as the bell rang for the school to end, oh, okay, skip on ahead, get fucking kidnapped. 
<laughs> and yell out fucking this name right here. Yeah, I can't pronounce it. Don't even let me try. Isru? Uh, yeah, I did it. <laughs> All of a sudden, a bright purple light engulfed the room, causing the devils around me to cover themselves. What the? It's my bae. He's gonna come here and kick your ass. <laughs> Gusts of wind rushed past me, almost forcing me back. I covered my face with my arms, bracing myself and standing my ground. I tried to peek through my arms to see what was going on, but the light continued to shine brightly. As the gust of as the gust slowly started to die, the light began to fade, revealing Davian with the blank expression staring coldly at Malix. <laughs> Damien. I'm here. As I promised. Yeah, I see that. Malix moved his arms from in front of his face and slowly took in the new sight in front of him. Quickly, Malix's face turned to that of pure evil delight. Out of the five pretty boys, you summoned the pathetic one? What a fucking moron! What? <laughs> Don't make me come over there and beat your ass with my bae. Damien stared at Malix, silent and fiercely cold. Damien began to walk towards Malix on what's Step at a time, one step at a time. Malix, however, brought up his gun, pointing it at Damien. So long, pretty boy! <laughs> nah, he's not gonna die that easily. I have faith. I have faith! Malix pulled the trigger and let a bullet fly straight at Damien's head. I gasped, bracing myself for the result of the shot. Hashtag trust, man! Oh, shit. However, Damien kept walking. Oh, shit! You fucked now, boy! Damien didn't fly back, nor did he flinch from the shot. I couldn't see the bullet rune, but I knew there had to be one in Damien's face. But there isn't. What, what the? Fucking die! Nah. <laughs> Malice began to quickly pepper shots in Dam into Damien's face, some of them passing completely through his head. Shit. There was no blood, no fire, nothing. It was as if Damien didn't really exist as he walked towards the now frightened devil. What crap spell is this? One that's gonna beat your ass. As Damien finally reached Malix, the devil jabbed Damien's head, Damien's head towards the ground, making Damien's body fall and slam into the concrete. As the body settled onto the ground, it slowly began to burn away in purple flames. Malix gritted his teeth. Whoa, doppelganger! Is that like a Bushin no jutsu? Where are you, Damien? What is going on? Can I do something? Malik scanned the room with like a hungry dog hunting for its final meal. Malik's body began to glow a fiery red color in anger from the situation. Haha, <laughs> you bad. The remaining devils stared, trying to figure out what to do. Help Malik or watch in silence. Eris, however, walked up beside me and crossed her arms as she, as she watched with an amused smirk on her face. Come out! Yeah, she thinks you look so dumb. <laughs> The air instantly went from frantic to still in energy. What could have been described in tone as the color red quickly turned into a deadly mix of purple and black as everything began to blend together all at once. Damien's voice finally replied, however, his voice seemed different. What's wrong, Malex? Are you afraid of me now? Oh shit. You fucked now. I was suddenly afraid. Something about Damien didn't fit right with how I knew him. He sounded otherworldly. His voice was dripping with an almost sadistic tone as he spoke through the air. Yo, I want to see this go down. I ain't scared. Afraid of a pretty boy like you. <laughs> you don't even have the balls to face me head on. You're the one who's afraid. I just want to see Malik get fucked over. I look looking at Malik, however, I could tell that he was off. Something about what Damien was doing was keeping Malik in his place. Oh, I'm not afraid of you. In fact, I know very well you're afraid to move right now. You're practically screaming it in your mind. Oh, shit, he knows! We've been playing mind games with you! Ha 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 ha. in a fit of insane rage, began to shoot into the air, letting the bullets fly into the ceiling. That's not a good idea because this building can collapse on us. Shut the hell up! We're just, we're just gonna stand here. Can't I just get some popcorn while I'm at it? Damien's demonic laughter filled the room as a group of dark figures appeared around Malik's, walking towards him slowly and menacingly. 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 <laughs> English! In defense, Malix fired shots at each entity around him, causing them to fall and fade away into purple flames. However, this, that didn't stop more than... However, that didn't stop... For, uh, more from appearing around him and closing in on him, Malix became frantic. Was this the extent of demon power? Pretty impressive, actually. I suddenly felt a pair of hands cover my eyes tightly. 
pulling me against someone's chest. I gasped, but was stopped from prying their hands off my face. It's me. Don't look. Why not? I want to see him get fucked. I listened carefully and let the last words linger in my mind. Don't look. Why? What was being hidden? What was being hidden from me? I wanted to know, but something told me to obey Sam's command. I could still hear Malik's screams of agony and the sound of ripping flesh. The smell of blood was covered by the harsh odor of, a of ash and fire. Oh, maybe it was better that I wasn't able to see. Damien, enough! Oh shit! Almost instantly after James' command, the sound stopped. The only thing any anyone could hear then was the sound of dripping blood. At least let me dispose what's left of him. Yeah. What's left of him? What? Just the head? I'll take care of it. <laughs> You've done enough, Damien. Come out. Aww. <laughs> after a brief silence, a pair of footsteps made their way to my spot. Each step seemed to echo with a hunt with a haunting otherworldly tone almost as if a very low and dark piano played a singular note with each step the pair of feet took i will admit you really wailed on him you practically scared everyone out of the warehouse it's a good thing you were hiding when you lost your glamour spell huh what what glamour spell what did he mean why did damien sound so different why was this being hidden from me i want to see don't dude i just got kidnapped and like there's so much stress put on me why can't i just ugh. it's a spell that makes us look human oh okay oh I, ah so it's like it's like the wolf um, the wolf among us with the whole glamour spell that all the fairy tale creatures had oh, okay 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 I froze. Look human? They didn't look like humans after all? What do they look like? I want to see. Like demons. That's so, that Demons can look like anything! <laughs> As if Matthew knew what Damon was talking about, Matthew spoke up, followed by a sound of a cork popping out of a bottle. What? Well, not for much longer. Here. Ah, I wanted to see! I could hear the small clinking of glass being passed before hearing Damien guzzle down a liquid of some sort. The feel of the air around me gently began to warm back up, insinuating that everything had been returned to normal. Finally, Sam moved his eyes from my hand. <laughs> dyslexic! <laughs> I swear I'm dyslexic, and I read too fast. Anyways, let's try that again. Finally, Sam moved his hands from my eyes, allowing me to see around me once again. The devils, including Eris, had fled. Malice was missing, but the blood stains left behind in his place told me that he was definitely dead, regardless of his location. The boys, however, had gathered around me, all of them, including Damien, looking like nothing had happened. Ha! Rest in pieces, bitch. Wh what just? I tried to speak, but everything zipped around in my head at the whole event, and I felt like speaking wasn't possible. Let's just get you home, miss. There's nothing more to see here. Uh, clearly. I could only nod. What, what happened? What had happened boggled my mind to the point of disbelief. I was second guessing everything, lost in the sea of what and how and when. As we walked out of the warehouse, I looked to Damien for some form of sign that I wasn't dreaming. Damien, despite looking down at his feet, held a face of cold sadness as if he regretted what he did. Aww. It was over. Malix was gone and the boys was. And the boys were finally safe. A wave of relief ran through my body at the thought of never having to deal with that group again. Okay, so, uh, yes. Finally, we can relax. Yes, and also the fact well, is that... I think is some that, sleep would be good for all of yeah, us. Yeah, the fact is, is that the problem has been dealt with, and that was the deal, which, you know, we had, and I don't know if you guys are going to leave now, but let's see. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. Should we be gone in the morning? No! Okay, the air became still with tension, the realization... The realization of the situation hit the boys like a wave, forcing them to turn to me in curiosity. They had remembered their deal and were now waiting me to decide their fate. I gulped face to face with the reality of the situation. The boys were leaving it, it up to me. The boys were leaving it up to me. They looked like they were willing to accept whatever I had demanded. It was only fair though, after all that had happened. I looked at Damien, feeling my heart flutter in my chest. I didn't want him to leave, but would he ask to stay? I hoped that he would say no and ask me to stay longer. As he knew what I wanted, Damien moved and stepped to me, staring into my eyes with almost pleading eyes. His eyes made me want to whimper in guilt, but then he spoke. I know we've only been here for a short while, but you've done so much for us just by giving us a place to stay. However, if, if I may be honest, I really would like us to stay here longer. Can we? Hell yeah, let's party! 
My heart skipped while a large bl red blush ran across my cheeks. The boy stared at Damien wide-eyed, but didn't dare to speak out. Damien steps back to give me space, returning to where he was. I moved my gaze across each boy, trying to make a decision. If they left in the morning, I would never see them again, and my life could return to normal. But if I decide to let them go, that would have been for the best. No goodbyes, no delays. But did I want to? They had done so much for me in such a small amount of time. Let them go, let them stay. Let them stay! Let's party! Let's party! And let them stay. I'm just gonna like, save it here then. Fuck. Christ. Let me do this! Thank you. Let them stay. I wanted them to stay. I wanted him to stay! <laughs> I merely smiled staring at the man I had come to have feelings for before speaking at last. I would love it if all of you could stay. The boys cheered tirely, but nonetheless enthusiastically. I giggled at the sight. It was cute to see everyone so excited despite the tiredness that ran equally through our bodies. Today was a rough day. My home is your home. Mi casa is su casa. As long as you can still help with chores. The boys nodded in unison, agreeing to the terms I had set for them. Despite the good situation, I felt myself slowly slipping into unconsciousness. However, James quickly clapped his hands together, getting everyone's attention and waking me up, making sure that I didn't pass out on the floor. Cause, cause that'd be pretty bad. All right, everyone. We're all very tired, so let's head to bed, shall yeah, we? Yeah, let's just sleep. I'm tired. Oh! Yeah, sleep is actually a thing. Right. Yeah. We've had a very long day, but it will be good to just relax tonight and tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Sleep sounds really good right now. Mm -hmm. Unless Diana shows up. I hope she doesn't. Yeah, man. I hope she doesn't. I swear to God. Please, no. I watched a small smile grow onto Damien's lips. He shared my excitement knowing that we would be together longer. Who knew how long we would stay together? All I cared about was that I would be with him. Ah, The others quickly left to finally rest, leaving me and Damien alone at last. Kisses! Time for kisses! Yeah? <laughs> my heart fluttered a bit as Damien walked closer to me. He was happy and it was really cute to see him that way, so I didn't do anything but smile back. Thank you. No problem. You're welcome, Damien. I'm happy to have you stay here. I watched his smile brighten a bit before he cleared his throat and looked up at me with a serious face. I didn't know if it was the tiredness or my growing attachment to him, but I felt myself sway a bit on my feet. However, Damien's face made it clear that he wanted to say something else, making me forget that my bed was also calling for me. Listen, about what happened at the warehouse... It's fine! You're... You did your thing, and I'm so proud of you, like you were badass, like I thought you were, and it's all cool. No, it's fine. You did what you had to do, I understand. I had accepted everything that happened and knew that Damien had to be had to do what he had to do. He was real and he was someone I didn't want to be without, even if that meant nodding against my curiosity. Besides, I was too tired to explore that memory further. Damien nodded before holding out a hand to me. Come on. Let's get you to Yes, bed. bed. Thank you. I nodded before Damien gently lifted me up into his arms like a bride and carried me to my room. I didn't want to leave his arms leading, leading my head against Damien's chest, but eventually I was slowly lowered to my bed and covered with my bed covers. I was still in my school clothes, but I was too tired to strip or care. I looked at Damien fighting a yawn from escaping me as he gently ran a hand over my hair. Good night. I'll make breakfast for you in the morning. Aw, thank you. I nodded with a tired smile before watching him slowly stand and leave my room, closing the door. A wave of happiness washed over me as I laid in bed. I made a good choice. Sure, it would be hard, but I could tell that I would be able to manage it. Help around the house and being with a man whom I was slowly starting to fall for would be worth it. Will it? I slowly felt my exhaustion take over. I let sleep consume me as I drifted on into the darkness in my mind. Everything was peaceful. I was happy. Oh shit! I finished an ending! Hey! Was that a good ending? Was that a good ending? Shit, I don't know. Is this an ending or not? Guys, 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 this is an ending. It is an ending! Oh my god, I got it. Did I get a good ending? Did I? Never mind. <laughs> fucking, 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 fuck, fuck.
You are an interesting creature. You. Okay, I'm gonna end this episode right here, you guys. Woo! That's it. we basically kind of like went through all the events in the beginning, where like some of the things are the same, some of the things are, and most of the things are different. But anyways, I think we're on a good, uh, good route right here with Damien right now. So we're gonna leave it here and then deal with this bitch some other time because I am tired from all that drama happening. So until next time then, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!